This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley quality Christian programming for more than 40 years. Hello, this is Rita again, and we've had a good little recess over Christmas, and um, I'm just really thrilled again to be here speaking truth, speaking the conviction of my soul as I read the scriptures that God has given us. And even since I've talked with you last, which was I think early, last de early December, the world has changed. The world has changed even more. And I feel and I hear a sense of uh, fever in peoples all over the land. Everybody knows we're coming into the big thing. Scripture tells us heaven and earth is going to pass away. It has a time frame. God has a plan and that he reveals it here in this word. And if we're acquainted with it and we're paying attention to it, we know the time frame. And even those who aren't in the Word, they feel it. They see things are radically changed. Well, praise God. Not only that, uh, the greatest reality is that God wins in this whole thing. And so do His people. We are here to be the light. And we will soon be removed as well as the Spirit of God. That's what the Bible says. Wow, we think that the world is bad now while the Spirit of God is wooing, drawing people, being merciful, waiting. You got Christians like salt in the earth, flavoring things, speaking of heavenly truthful things. What will it be when that's gone? Well, we talked last time about Matthew 24. I have one, two, three, four, five, six, six scriptures in the New Testament that deal very directly with the second coming of Christ or what a lot of people have come to lean on a term called rapture, which we spoke last month. The history of that blew that away. It's not a word even found in Scripture. The concept is not even in Scripture. The word that God uses for His people being taken out is called being caught up. But that is simultaneously at the same time that Christ returns to judge. There's only one ending. Only one ending. There are not two or three chances. Part way, a little bit later. You can't find it in the Bible. You'll hear a lot. You'll find it in books, but not in the Bible. So we talked about that last time, and I'm just going to review a little bit. Matthew chapter 24 is, in my opinion, one of the clearest order of the events of the last days. It's a consecutively. It starts out, Jesus is answering his disciples who said, Lord, when is this time when all the works and plans of man will be brought down and destroyed. When is that time? Jesus said, first, don't be deceived. That's the key word. Because many will be deceived. And the Bible says, everyone that dwells upon the face of the earth will be deceived except those 
who have received the love of this truth. So he gives the events there. And um, in it, we find that in verse 15, let's look at it. When ye therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing where it ought not, that's in the holy place. Then, whoso readeth, let him understand. Now, the Antichrist, when you see the abomination of desolation, there are other scriptures, a whole other lot of scriptures that talk about this being the Antichrist sitting in a holy place as though he were God, wanting all men to worship him. And this actually happens. And when you see that, it's about over. During this time, it says it's going to get rough. There's going to be afflictions. There's going to be, we're going to be killed. The believers Jesus is talking to said we're going to be hated of all nations for his name's sake. Don't you feel that happening already? The world doesn't want the name of Jesus. They do not want to deal with it. And if we are associated with that name, we're in that group where they hate, they don't want to hear about it. How eager are all your unsafe friends? How eager are they to have you talk to them about Jesus? And he said, so it's going to get tough. Believers are going to be killed, afflicted, persecuted. They are going to have tribulation. Tribulation is a treatment and so Jesus encourages his people here, endure to the end. Endure to the end. Endure to the end. Don't fear them that can kill the body. And they're done. There's no more they can do. But fear him who can destroy both body and soul in hell. Oh, the Bible says the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. I praise God that I have a sense of that fear, which is high regard. And the older I live, the longer I live, the older I get, the more I read. Ah, I just keep feeling weaker in the view of his majesty and might and authority and dominion and power. Do you know God's not nervous? Nobody's got him shaken up. His heart's broken for us, for the people. But it's not going to stop him from judgment. Now is the day of salvation. If you hear his voice, don't harden your heart. So that's what Matthew 24 had to say. And we see there, there is a time in which certain things happen, and they are markers. So when you read in the scriptures, look at it. It's all about timing. And there will be great tribulation. We have been told, it's been talked about as though it's just a specific time and in a sense, it is because it increases. But trip, and, and, and that, that thought has been confused and rejected by many, saying God doesn't appoint us to wrath. We're not going to bear any tribulation. Well, listen, friend, if you'll study that, that's not from God. It's from man. And man does tribulate us. Even your little child can give you a tough time on a, on a day at home. God doesn't tribulate us. We're not appointed to his wrath. That's true. But tribulation of man is not God's wrath. You have to look in scripture to see that. I'm telling you that I've studied this stuff. And I will continue as long as I live. So he says this time of affliction punishment, tribulation, treatment of man against the followers of Christ 
is going to be greater, more severe, more intense, the scripture says here in Matthew, than it's ever been before or ever shall be. This is the last big attack and destruction against the people of God by the wicked. All right, my next scripture is um, Luke, Luke 12, 40. And Jesus says there, he's talking now in this scripture about timing again, but it's not tied to an event like Matthew 24 was. It's tied to a kind of mentality that we have to guard against. He said, the Son of Man is going to come at an hour when you think not. So keep it in your mind. I once knew a saintly little woman and, and uh, she is old, old, old now, in late 90s in a little care facility. She doesn't know who's visiting her. But I remember a song she used to play on the piano and she'd sing the words. And it said um, something to this effect. She said, each morning when I awake and I see the rosy hue in the sky, I wonder if this would be the day that Jesus will come and I'll see him in the sky. That's how we should be living. And when you understand the horrors of this world and the condition and start feeling what God feels, <laughs> that is your glorious thought. That'll keep us afloat, friends. It'll keep you afloat in old age, in sickness, in persecution, in tribulation, in suffering. When it's longer than we thought. So, be thinking, Jesus could come. Looking for him, it'll keep you above the, the storm. It's because the storm is going to get worse. And you've got to encourage yourself. It says, exhort one another and encourage each other with these words. Behold, he's coming. You know that word, Maranatha? They used to greet each other with the word, Maranatha. That means, he comes. Oh, we haven't talked like that for a long time in the church that I know of, not in the churches I go to. But I think it's going to come back. And we're not, we're not trying to sound religious or holier than anybody else. But to speak what this says will sound strange. Maranatha, my friend. He is coming. So now down in verse 44 of Matthew 24, it says, Therefore, be ready, for in an hour such as you think not, the Son of Man cometh. Who then is a faithful and wise servant whom his Lord finds so doing? Now it goes on. It's not the end of the sentence. Who is that wise and faithful servant whom his Lord shall find so doing giving meat in due season to the household of God. That's what we're doing today. That's what's going on in this television broadcast room. We're about the business of giving the bread of life, the food of heaven, the truth of God. We're giving it out. That's meat to the hearers. Still a line of hope. Okay, so <clears throat> after Luke 12, 40, when it says, be ready, because in an hour when you think not, he cometh. Okay, now, we've observed that there's nothing secret yet talked about. Nothing secret. And there's nothing quiet about it. Let's go on. You'll find that those descriptions of it being public, loud, accompanies the scriptural coming of Jesus. It's not quiet, it's not secret, it's not disappear, and nobody knows what happened. No, there's been a lot of books written, they call themselves novels, but people have taken it as doctrine. That's a frightful thing to be involved in. Christian? 
Fiction? How can it be? Christian means of Christ. Fiction means not true. How can it be? Christian? Fiction? I think we got our hands full figuring out the truth, let alone confusing ourselves. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 13 through chapter 5, verse 3 speaks of the coming of the Lord. It says that when, he, when Christ comes, it says, and those who are alive and remain, see, it doesn't say the believers are gone. Some of, them, some of them have died. But those that are alive and remain. Now here it talks about order. We don't get to go up first. It says we will not prevent them that are asleep in Christ. For the dead in Christ rise first. They get a little preference there. So the dead in Christ are raised and with we who are waiting here alive at his coming. And then we're caught up together with the Lord. So there's only two groups of believers. Those who are dead and those who are alive. The scriptural description of the coming of the Lord. Um, again, in 1 Thessalonians 4, 16. Okay, we said there's nothing quiet about it. There's nothing secret about it. Rather, it'll be the loudest thing that this earth has ever heard. Remember that old song that says, Where shall I be when that great trumpet sounds, when it sounds so loud that it wakes up the dead? Where shall I be when the great trumpet sounds? Why would Christ be silent about such a day that is called His day? When it's your birthday, your celebration, your graduation, your culmination of all your efforts, would you be pretty happy about the turnout of it? The end, the accomplishment of it? Christ is. He came in the flesh, humbled himself, condescended. God came to us, flesh like you and me. And he's been in heaven waiting a long time. Waiting like the martyrs in Revelation who it says their souls are under the altar and they cry, Oh Lord, how long until you avenge our blood? The blood of Christ has cried out, Oh God, how long? So when the Father says it's time, He comes. Here's a description of it. 1 Thessalonians 4.16 For the Lord Himself shall descend from heaven with a shout. I'm tuning my ear for that. Don't you get excited? Hey, don't people shout at the game, at the football game? Whoa! The basketball game, whatever, hockey, whatever. Golf tournaments. Wow. We're made to win. We're, that's part of us that's part of God. Jesus comes from heaven with a shout. Now this is a very peculiar kind of shout. Here, that word is explained further in your concordance of the Greek. It's a cry, and now listen to this. You think excitement, and I think that's in it. But it literally says it's a cry of incitement. Do you know when a crowd is incited? They can raise up like, rise up like a mob and burn cars and throw buildings and blow them up. So this is an aggressive word. It's a powerful, explosive word. So Christ comes with a shout of incitement. Remember, he's waited for God to avenge and to judge the earth for its wickedness. 
How long has he had to look at it? How long? Our murderous ways are unclean, unnatural ways. We're not happy to be healthy and, and, and free in our mind. We confused ourselves. Wouldn't have it any other way. We've loved distortion and perversion. Oh, dear Jesus. Dear Jesus. As grievous as it is, he doesn't want to smash us. That's why he's waiting. That's why he's pleading. That's why even like today he's still saying, look, reason, come reason with God. He's a reasonable God. Though our sins are black, they can be white, it says. Though they're red like crimson, they can be white as wool. So he descends with a shout of incitement. Now, in this word incitement, in the Greek it says vengeance. Ho ho. Excitement is in there as well. God's wrath. God has said he's long in mercy. And great in forgiveness. But when the time is done, he's ready to pour out wrath. Yes, my friend, wrath. The wrath of God. Whew. I wouldn't want to be playing around, would you? I mean, dear Lord, dear Lord, let us fear how we use this temple. So this shout has in it desire, as it were, a reaching forth, a violent passion. That's what all this definition is in the Greek word for shout. And it says here, it's, it's a shout of justifiable vengeance. Boy, I love the study of the scriptures. It's so clear. Justifiable vengeance. It is, it has also in the word of incitement and shout. It has in it as well anger, wrath, violent passion. It's called the day of the Lord. Now he's going to be heard. Now he is going to show the earth his heart. After so long, he came first in love. We didn't like that one. So it's the only option. There's only one salvation. Other than that, it's damnation. And no matter what your church cheat teaches, there's no secondary place and there's no second chance. Find it in scripture, you won't. All right. So again, we repeat, it comes as a thief in the night. It's not quiet, not that kind of thief. And it's not secret, not that kind of thief, but it's unexpected. At a time when you're not thinking about it, when you don't think about it, okay called the day of the Lord is not called rapture. That word is non-existent in here as well as the concept is non-existent. But it is called the blessed appearing. God's not, he doesn't want to do anything in secret. It's the blessed appearing is our hope, not the blessed disappearing do you know the word disappears not even in scripture? It's not in God's thinking. Interesting. It's spoken of as the blessed appearing and the whole earth will see and know. He says, every eye will behold him. The son of man coming in the clouds. Ooh. So there are only two comings. He came as a child, as a baby, for sin. 
to cover for sin. And this second coming, which is the last and the only, there's not three, is to judge the earth for what they did with it. Okay, now one more thing I want to point out here. Revelation 1, 7, I'll repeat this. Every eye is going to see him. He's going to be up in the clouds. He's going to come with the clouds. And even those that pierced him are going to look on him. And all the kindreds of the earth shall mourn because of him. Even so, amen. Now in 1 Corinthians 15, we read this. It just keeps confirming. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 52 through 58 says, In a moment, the twinkling of an eye. Doesn't mean it's all over that quickly. You keep reading. It means it's, it happens, boom, like that. The dead are raised, and we are changed. That's what happens in a moment. The whole coming of the Lord can't be a moment, because as you study it further, there's so many things that add His coming that happen. It's the outpouring of wrath, everything. There's a lot to go on there. So what is the twinkling? What is the twinkling of an eye referring to? Is it not referring to changed? It says in a moment, in the twink twinkling of an eye, the dead are raised and we're all changed. We don't go back in the in mother's womb and start over and burn, born again that way. We're changed. What change is made? We put on immortality. We drop off this old flesh that has so many years on it, and that's all. And we get a body, the scripture says, fashioned like unto his glorious body. Remember when Jesus first came, he came in flesh like us. He died, buried. And God raised him from the dead. And there he starts, to, starts defying the limitations of us being God. And that is what now he's purchased for us. So we die, go to the grave. But when he comes, the dead in Christ rise first. And in a moment, we're changed into a glorious body, likened unto his body. It's a brand new one. And you know, we can just think about that naturally and try to comprehend it. What was his new body like? He went in and out of walls and doors and houses and didn't need doors. Well, we're back. we need to close here. So second, uh, Peter, let me give you this one last. 3.10, again, repeats as a thief in the night. Not silent, not quiet, but unexpected when you think not. Everyone should study. In the meantime, study these words. The difference between tribulation and persecution. God bless you. We're going to close today. And I hope we see you again soon. Amen. This is CBY, Christian Broadcasting of Yakima, your local Christian television station, bringing to our valley 
quality Christian programming for more than 40 years.